Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope you are very well. Today we've got a really exciting episode and an episode I don't normally do and don't normally share with you, but I thought might be interesting and I think people will enjoy. Enjoy it while it's here because I can't guarantee I will do this for every launch I do, um, but I'm happy to, to share with you today. So today's episode is going to be a most recent launch debrief. I'm going to share with you my reflections, my review. The program was called Ms Accelerator that we launched. It sold out and it was our most effortless, seamless nice kind of launch to date um so I thought let's share it why not because people might want to hear about it and this is a two-parter actually because today I'm going to talk about the debrief and more specifically about the launch I'm also going to do an episode because I think might be really helpful on what didn't work specifically around what I didn't manage to execute on and what because of my chronic illness I just couldn't do and then thoughts in that episode also around kind of launching and if you're using launching whilst you have a chronic illness and how to make that work in your business because I know there's a lot of you who listen to this who may have a chronic illness some kind of mental health condition illness that you know you have some kind of situation in your life which means that maybe typical launching or traditional ways that business is taught and you know sales is taught that doesn't really work for you or you might have a limited capacity in terms of how much time you can dedicate to um launching and things like that so that's going to be a second episode so this is kind of a two-parter today i'm just going to debrief on this launch specifically in case you're not interested in that and you just want to listen to the other episode or vice versa so the launch to keep this short and sweet um, May's Accelerator was the program. Now that is a key program within May James. This cohort was cohort three, so it already ran for two cohorts previously, um, which meant it was like a year old the program. So we launched it last summer, um, or kind of last May, I think it was last May June, um, and that was the first cohort. Then we had the second cohort, which started in January, and then the third cohort was the launch that I've just done, which kicked off. Uh, two, three weeks ago on the 3rd of July. And that was what we were filling with this launch. Um, and then cohort four will begin sort of January, 2024. And enrollment will start with that in November of this year. So it's kind of a six month here or there program, um, give or take. And it's, um, I love it. I mean, it, it's fantastic. It's really a great, beautiful program where people can access me on a really high touch level um, without paying for my one-to-one -one service. So that's kind of the um, the pull with it, if you will. I mean, there's lots of reasons why you would join it. However, just to give you context, um, my one-on-one -on -one consultant fee is £15,000 for six months. And that gets people, you know, multiple calls a month with me for 60 minutes. That gets people done for you element it's an there's an in-person element there is having me um on hand all the time like it's a you know it's an all-in package for people who are scaling multi six figure seven eight figure businesses and are really looking to grow maze accelerator is a kind of fractionated version of that that is in a group setting that is for people who are scaling their businesses they don't have to be at a certain revenue um point in the sense of we've got people in there in a variety of different um revenue sort of levels in terms of like multi six figures um all the way down um and they get you know they get access to me monday to thursday via slack so they can get a really high touch point and it's incredible value for money the program for what they pay so the the fee for this um cohort was four thousand two hundred pounds um, and that was for the total kind of package and we did have a payment plan. So we had a payment plan option of seven payments of £600. So they could pay over seven payments if they wish to. Now, I will share and break down with you what did we end up with. We ended up with nobody paid in full, um, six people in total, which we cap at. So that I should probably explain that. <laughs> we capped the group at six people. And we've got five people paid over six months and one person is paying over 10 months, which I sometimes will do. So an extended payment plan is where it's a, a payment plan that isn't a one that I advertise and it isn't a one that I sort of, that is there as an option. But um, for certain people and for certain situations and for certain reasons that people may wish to, sometimes I will, depending on the business, say, yes, you can. And there was one person who I said yes to. So yeah. 
nobody paid in full this time, I don't think. No. So we ended up with everyone on a payment plan of subscription, five people on a seven month payment plan and one person on a 10 month payment plan. A note on payment plans with me, I let people pay the payment plan off in full if they want to. So for example, the last cohort of Maze Accelerator, there were two people on an extended payment plan. One person got to the end of Maze Accelerator and wanted to pay off the rest of the payment plan that they had, which I agree that they're allowed to do. And so, yeah, in someone else isn't like it doesn't, I don't really mind, but I offer that as a option because I know people who are interested in the really intricate details are going to want to know how does it work. So um, that is the situation with that. Um, so I suppose we might as well. So how much was the launch? So I suppose if you want to talk about in terms of money, um, six people at 4,200, which is probably around 25,200, I think my maths is right about the 25k um sales but obviously that is just for the sales that were off maze accelerator that doesn't then count for any sales that come in aside from the program i'm just going to tell you the sales related to the actual program um maze accelerator as a container we have capped at six people mainly because of how high touch it was as i mentioned earlier so it doesn't really work having like i couldn't really have 10 people in the group on one call we could do but the call would get very very long the call's already two hours long and so they get three calls a month uh which are two hours long each i'm not going to tell you every single bit about the program because you probably don't really care <laughs> um but it's good to give you some context right for certain things so um yeah there's six people in the group now this before this launch we had toyed with can this serve more people this program's amazing it does really good things it is incredibly you know, transformational. It, it requires people to to work and to, to take action. It, it doesn't really do much if they're not going to do anything because it's very much um, a consultant advisory container. It's not a like learning container necessarily, although there is learning pieces in it. It's more so a come and get Maze high level strategic advice and advice for your business, bespoke advice and bespoke strategy at a fraction of the cost. In order for that to work, it means that people have to show up, they have to ask questions, they've got to go and do the work. Like I can only help them so far, right? So that is kind of there. And there's a whole there was a whole discussion in the business around well, why are we opening up to more people? Because that's really necessary. And the price point's so accessible for a lot more people than it is at my other offerings, right? So this is like the only way really to work long term with me at this high touch point that isn't sort of one on one. So um, it's kind of a the argument is you know if you're only limited to six people that's not really great so anyway we had a conversation we decided that actually I could probably have two call groups which would mean that I had 12 people in total and we would split it where six people were on a call and six people were on a different call and I could manage it that way I was happy to do that and was happy to execute on that and we kind of carved some time in my diary to to make sure that I was going to be able to take on with that um and what we said was, which I think is going to be really interesting for some people who are listening to this and might be sort of the juicy information, is I didn't make a decision there and then that we were going to do two calls. So normally in a launch, you would, or I would advise and say to people, right, pick how many people you're going for. If it's not like unlimited, right? Some of the things you're launching, you can have unlimited people in because it's a scalable offer and there's loads of people can come and go. Great. But if you're someone who does have capped spots for whatever reason, and that can be for many different reasons, normally I would be like, you need to make a decision on like how many, is it six, is it 12, is it 24? Like, what is the plan? We went into this launch and I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dictate it. I'm going to see who, who comes in, who applies, who wants to join us. And then let me make my decision. This has come down to a point because of this game in terms of if you want to call it a game of, of Maze Accelerator is not about filling bums on seats. That doesn't make sense. Maze Accelerator, and this, how do I say this without this sounding rude? This, the money that that brings in, it, yeah, it's a great amount of money. Like it's, I'm not going to say it's not a lot of money, like it is a lot of money, but it also, it also requires a lot of my time and it requires more so a lot of my brain space. And so for me, if in terms of finding the money and filling it from a revenue perspective, there's other avenues for me to 
go down to find the money if we wanted the money, right? So for me, it's more about who am I working with? And May's Accelerator is a hand-picked group. So I go through every single one, they apply, and there is a strong application process. And there is a re- for a reason. Like I go through it, I highlight it, it gets printed off for me. I sit there, I work out, do I want to accept this person? I speak to them more often than not. Um, if I want to get on a call with them and I want to ask them some questions or I need to reiterate something to them or make sure they understand something like it is not just me a case of like accept 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 like I am like sat there going do I want to work with this person do I want to sit with them for however you know however many months however long like do I believe in their business do I believe in what they're doing do I can I help them with their goals so this is like a serious situation and I think you know, because of the price point, some people will say, well, it's 4,200. Like in the grand scheme of what you do, that's not a lot of money. But in terms of the amount of time they're going to spend with me, it's big. And in terms of energy, which is what I'm really big on in terms of I won't be around people whose energy is just not it, then I have to be really careful because we're going to spend six months together. So I decided to go into this being like, let's just see. I said, we might do two call groups and we might not. Let's just see who who comes in because I knew I was going to be really picky and I'd rather one really good group than I just didn't want it to be like, let's just fill 12 because we can have 12. So to cut a long story short, instead of waiting for any suspense before the rest of the episode, obviously we finished with one group of six people, which I was so happy about and really loved the group that we got in terms of um, the applications we got this round and, you know, what did I think? I turned, I'm trying to think, did I turn away more? I think so. I said, not right now or go away and do this or come back at this point. Then I said, yeah, let's come and join. So what happened was there was a lot of people in the DMs who were either already clients in other areas, as in like we're in Year of Clarity, which is a program we have, um, which is a great accessible program that opens once a year. You can join the waitlist for that if you want to join us because that is fabulous. (laughs) It'll open in November. There's people in there who were thinking about moving over and then there's sort of like other people in our audience and people and there was messages and conversations going on. And there were conversations where I'm really, you know, brutal and open and say like, right, right now is a no, come back when you've done X, Y and Z thing. And that felt good and nice to be saying to people because it's exciting. (laughs) You know, it's, it feels good to me to say, don't spend your money now. Like there's no point you need to do X, Y, and Z. And then also it means that when I do say to someone like, you need to be in there, let's go, let's do this. It makes me feel very happy because I know that it's, they're meant to be there. So there was a lot of that going on. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, well, someone else would maybe do this and someone else would do that. You're here to hear what I did. I basically won't take someone on unless I'm like, yep, let's do it. Let's roll. Let's rock and roll. We also had, so there's some people in the DMs. There were a few people who applied who we got on a sales call and then I was like, yeah, this, no, let's do next round or, you know, you need to, uh, there's no point in you spending the money until you come and do X, Y, and Z thing. So it was really interesting this time. And it was really nice to see kind of where people were. And one thing I would say to you is if you're listening to this and you're a business owner and because you launch is the power of long-term brand and the power of selling one thing is is really huge because people had a real solid understanding of what the program was, what it does, what it doesn't do. Like, And, and I try and purposely make it like that. Um, you know, we're in the message and I try and be very clear of like, don't join of this, do join of this, don't do this, don't do this. Like it isn't this, it isn't this, it won't do this because it, it really helps people understand that it is for them. So the people that did buy were buying very fast. So people were like applying and I was speaking with them and then they buy straight away. Like the sales process was, was pretty short in terms of the active sales process. If you want to talk about the whole sales process in terms of like from people finding us, that can be very long. People in my world will sit and watch for a long, long time. <laughs> and that might be you right now. You might be sad thinking, one day I'm going to work with her, but I not right now for whatever reason, that's fine. So I have people who have sat and watched, you know, for like two years or more. Um, and when the time's right, they jump in. So there's a mixture. On the other hand, we also had this time where someone found me via a podcast and jumped in within the space of days of finding me and that isn't kind of unusual like that happens um people know mainly because our messaging is so clear in the sense of like 
you either like me or you don't to some degree. Like people kind of know what you're getting um, in the way that I, you know, facilitate the way that my, the way I work is very clear cut and it's no bullshit. And it tends to be that people who also like a no bullshit approach really kind of see themselves at me and, and they enjoy that connection and they really thrive off that level. Because when people come into Maze Accelerator, biggest part of the sales process for me is getting people to understand that I am brutal. And when I say I'm brutal, I mean it in the sense of like, I tell people what they need to hear. I don't kind of sugar it up. I don't put loads of fluff around it. Like I go through, I'm a busy person. I've got lots to do. There's lots of people in there who've got lots of things to do as well. I'm like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, do this, do this, do this, change this. Maybe look at this. What do you think on this? Like, it's very cohesive. It isn't a like, let's all just see what you think and like chill out and have fun. Like, that isn't what that is like what this container is and so a lot of the sales process is around me making sure that that's clear people the other part of the sales process is also around getting people to understand what I can and can't promise them in terms of what this program will do for them because the thing with Maze Accelerator is it massively depends on what they do in terms of what outcome they're going to get everyone comes into that with a different goal so some people's goals is growing their team sorting their operations out some people's is like making sales some people's is launching the business like the goal situation of what people want to achieve is so different and this is why what makes facilitation somewhat challenging and difficult for me but i kind of choose for that to be and that's why i've always put off doing like launch debriefs because i just think some people are going to like not understand and think what the hell are you like it, it won't to some people if they do launch it then they launch with you know like a hundred people coming into the launch they're going to be like why is this so long and drawn out um everyone comes in with a different goal and so in order for them to hit that goal that they want to hit it comes down to how much are they able to utilize the container and actually implement and so i have really stark and honest conversations before they've even joined saying hey when are you going to implement? Do you understand that this is the case? Do you understand that I can't make you like a hundred grand in the first two days that you're in there? And and really making that clear to people. It's part of my ethos around ethical sales. It's part of my ethos around making sure that people know what they're buying and what they're going to get for their money. But it's also around them just fully understanding what is this container going to take of me? Like, how do I show up in it? And I try and, and we do that in our content when I'm selling and when I'm publicly selling, but I also further follow it up with that when we're having a kind of, when they're like really at the point of purchase of the sales process. Um, that being said, it's not actually that difficult to join. <laughs> like I know that makes it sound like it's impossible to join and like, I'm not going to accept anyone. Um, you know, people do join. We had a wait list um, for this launch and that went really well. And I'm trying to think three people who joined were on the wait list yeah to give you some context so we had a wait list going which had been sort of collecting people um from before hand like before the launch opened three people bought off the wait list two people bought who were already in it from previous times and actually what's really interesting is the two people who bought it who are already a client in maze accelerator have been clients since the first maze accelerator so they have joined cohort one, cohort two, and then joined cohort three. So the third time being in the accelerator. Now the accelerator is set up so that people can do that. It is set up so that they can come. It's also set up so that you don't have to do that. So it's kind of like a, a two way street, <laughs> like depending on what people come in there for will depend on whether or not they need to stay or whether or not they want to stay. And there's a whole, you know, people can come and go, they can come. And then we have a conversation starting halfway through saying, actually, you know, what's the plan? Do you need to move? Do you not? Are you going to change? Like, do we need to, do you need to stay again? Do you need to spend the money? A lot of it comes down to me being like, well, is that a good investment in your business? Is that not? For some clients, it's like a non-negotiable. It's like, you need to be in here because that's really going to help you. For others, it's like, well, you could do, but you might not need to. And so, everybody has a different point of reason of being in there um and so to just finish my point on that three were waitlist two were from sort of um previously and then one person was not waitlist just to give you some context um to give you more context lots of the people who were on the waitlist applied in case that's helpful for you so our waitlist was very much a waitlist of people who were really quite hot in terms of leads so if you want to you know a waitlist can be anything for some people a waitlist is literally full of like 
not even lukewarm it's, it's quite cold people and that's okay there's no right or wrong with how to run, run a wait list but just in terms of it being interesting for people listening um the wait list we had for May's accelerator was I would say 80% were hot leads which was really nice it's a good place to have right it's a good place to be I'd say 10% were warm lukewarm and then there was 10% who were just like cold but that's really good for a wait list. Like that's very high. Um, and I, I felt really nice to have that. That didn't just randomly happen. That came from me talking about Maze Accelerator for the whole duration of the program and, you know, showing the wait list and saying, join the wait list if you want to come. Um, that came from a big pre-launch section of wait list push. So it's all very intentional. But what I'm sharing it for is to say like it does work. And um you know, I've seen it work on a much bigger scale with, with some clients that do launches um, from a from a bigger perspective. But it, it, it works, especially even if you want a small group of a certain quality or standard or group of people, um, it it works and it works very well. Um, so, yeah, the wait list went well and good. Two people obviously joined who have been long term clients, which is really lovely. And they joined. Two people came from Year of Clarity, which, as I mentioned before, is um, a low cost, affordable solution that people can buy at one time in the year and um, is a 12 month program that is all around business planning, reflection, strategy. It's a beautiful container. It's fantastic. Um, And two people came from that who were in this year's cohort. So they're currently in Year of Clarity. Both of them had um had really amazing results from the six months they'd done so far in, in year of clarity and, and really enjoyed that container and they see me once a month in there and both of them identified and could see how actually if they were with me every single week and you know every single day if they needed to in their business how much of an impact that can have and how you know they're in a point of their business where that made sense scaling growing changing optimizing etc and so they decided to jump in and then two people who joined were new clients. So two cli- two people were new clients to the business. They'd never worked with me before. They never bought anything before. And this is their first purchase with the business. And I think that's interesting for people to hear because I just think people don't really break this down. Um, so that's kind of for you there. So we had kind of like two OG long-term <laughs> clients, two um, clients who had been clients since sort of like January 2023 and then two new clients um going back to the wait list I said you know how I said that a lot of people uh the 80 percent who were hot and then applied or reached out or had conversations they um are sort of earmarked for next cohort so this was the other thing I thought was interesting to talk to you about when I say oh I didn't accept an application or you know we said no to more than we said yes to um it's important to know that when I'm saying no it's not that it's like a no go away I'm not working with you it's a you know now it's not the right time or go and do this or you can plan you know plan to join the next time or here's what I would suggest you look at or them coming to me and saying I want to join but I'm worried about x y and z and me saying actually right go away and do this and then come back and we can look at that so there is um a group of people now who are kind of earmarked as potentially wanting to join next round um and what i would say to you in that if you're in that camp of where you you have a lot of people who are like that don't think that they're all going to (laughs) join because i see people are like oh my god that means i've got like a whole group full and i'm like "Mm, that doesn't really like you can do a couple of things. You can offer to leave them a, you know, they can leave a deposit and they can um, actually physically secure their spot if you want to. Um, I don't do that because at the end of every, well, at a three quarters of the way through every cohort, I like to assess. We do an audit. We look at what's working, what isn't, what changes we want to make. I decide on pricing. Like, although the program stays the same and the crux of it stays the same, the actual logistics of it does tweak and change somewhat. Um, and so I personally don't get them signing up for future cohorts. There's nothing wrong if you do. Um, but just be mindful of like the people that you've got earmarked that might want to join. Like it's not a, I don't know. I just see people make really bad decisions around launches around that and, and relying on certain things to happen in order for X, Y, and Z thing to materialize. And I'd really be cautious. However, it is nice to have a group of names who are, you know, warm or hot that you know are like, yeah, I'm looking at this and I really want to 
seriously consider purchasing it from you. I think what's, oh, just to note on this, actually, we didn't have any, this isn't affiliate launch, this isn't a JV, uh, like a joint venture thing, this isn't any kind of like partnership launch, so I think that's kind of useful for you to to hear. Um, and again, I, I love an affiliate launch, I love a JV launch, I think they can work really well, but this is not that. Um, I think something that's really useful is that, you know, the power of personal brand and the power of your messaging and the power of everything that you invest into your business on a month to month basis and where that kicks off and really um, pays off for you. So, you know, a lot of this launch, it was so easy. It was, you know, I wouldn't say effortless because obviously (laughs) there is effort that goes into it, but it was very seamless. It felt very good. It was the most... Well, it was the most effort, effortless launch yet, but I, I feel like I use effortlessly, you know, loosely. Um, it was great. It felt fab. Like, it was really simple and easy. And, you know, should we have wanted to fill two groups, we could have filled two groups. Like, I, I felt it was a really nice point because it just depended on how much I wanted to push it and how, you know, where I wanted to go. So that felt really lovely because... Don't be illusioned in the thinking that people who you listen to their podcasts or you look at and admire have these like seamless, easy launches all the time because they don't. And like we've had many a launch where I'm like, was that good or was it not? Or did that work or was it right? And like, I feel like the outcome is always it was for the right reason, whatever the outcome happened. But at the time, it can be a bit conflicted and you're like, I don't really know. Or like, was that right? And so um I share this, I try and be open and honest with you to say like, don't expect for everything to go to plan. Because as I'm going to explain in the next episode, like even this launch, very little of it went, I didn't really follow the strategy that we were going to follow. Well, I did, but we didn't sort of thing. And then I'll explain it more in another, in another episode. Um, But yeah, you know, it was, it was pretty easy and it was really good and it felt nice. And it just felt really exciting to welcome more people into the business and to, really help them with their businesses the people that have joined their businesses are all completely different they're in different industries different you know sectors some of them like it's um a real diverse mixed group of you know also stage and and size of business but also just like what they actually do (laughs) you know got in-person businesses online businesses like people who um are direct consumer people who are b2b like it's just kind of it was just a different mix and that's what I love working with and that's where I really thrive and that's where I can really help people where many of us can't because my skill set is being able to to facilitate in that way um and that is a real gift you know and I don't kind of discount that because it's it's incredibly useful so that was the kind of piece of it I suppose you might want to know did I enjoy it I did I really enjoyed it I didn't dread it but also something interesting for you to know is that I didn't really call it a launch I see it more as an enrollment period I don't really see these like maze accelerator cohort fills as like a launch i see it more as just like an enrollment period and that it's open and people can join and um because i know people sit in my world for a long time often before they buy not always as i say someone found me in days and purchased and i've had it where someone's seen me in an hour and purchased before <laughs> like um you know people see me speak they're like yep that she's the one let's go but um quite often people can sit for a while that works having this like six month thing because actually by the time as accelerator comes around people are often then ready to actually assess whether or not it's time for them to work together and have some support and so that was really nice in terms of the platforms we used um for market and etc we used instagram and instagram was kind of pretty much the only thing <laughs> we didn't use linkedin although i have the biggest uh, size audience out of all the platforms on there i don't particularly utilize linkedin although i should do uh, that's a separate <laughs> separate thing what else what platforms we did we didn't really do a lot of email I'm going to talk more about what we did and didn't do in the next episode but um email we sent one email I think we basically integrated it into the CEO edit which is an email that goes out every Tuesday but in terms of having a whole email marketing campaign that was specific to the launch that um we didn't do that we sent one email to the wait list like this is what I mean by how easy and effortless it was like obviously if you want to fill like this was filling six spots if you wanted to fill like 50 spots we'd have a completely different strategy but it was very laid back and simple in the sense of the wait list I think we only sent one email which some of you are going to be like that is so bad um but it's so we sold quite quickly right like this sold I had quite a lot of options in terms of like who we were selecting so um 
it it wasn't a kind of like this wasn't a big push this isn't one of our big kind of like launches of the year it wasn't like a big like right we've got to get everybody in like you know um it's a more so like a slower enrollment nice period but when I say that I don't want it to come across as that it's like this easy thing that takes no effort because the reality of it is is the reason that it is easy is because of how consistent I am in terms of the messaging in terms of every day on social in terms of the podcast in terms of all of the touch points we have with people that's what makes it easy it's not the 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 launch necessarily itself is easy so platforms I think all we did was Instagram was it yeah (laughs) I think um Instagram was the main situation um we did have a sales page which was for the first time so again this might interest you but for the two cohorts previous I didn't have a sales page I had a google doc I sold off a google doc I love a google doc seller and I know some people think I'm really bad but I think you can sell you can sell a million pounds on a bloody google doc like without a sales page um so for the the other two cohorts we never had a sales page we just had a google doc um and you know that cohort for cohort two was full um, and that was off a sales page. So this year we did have a sales page. And actually, to be fair, the only reason we probably did was because my head of operations was like, maybe we need a sales page. Because <laughs> we were doing some planning of what was happening. She was like, come on, we need a sales page. I probably would have rolled with another launch without one, which is is bad really. Because, you know, having a sales page is good and you should have a sales page. And it's nice for people to be able to um, scroll and things. <laughs> so we did have a sales page um it wasn't the longest sales page in the world it also wasn't the shortest actually something useful about a sales page that you might want to know is it was very wordy so if you reviewed the sales page and if I ordered it for myself you typically say it was too long too long it was too wordy um but I purposely wanted loads on there because I wanted it to be people people who were going to read that were people who were like yeah I'm in I'm going to reply and so we basically had it purposely strategically wrote so that it literally had all the bits and pieces on about like, don't join if this, do join. Like it was very conversational. It was very straight to the point. It was very like, this is what it will do. This is what it won't do. This is what your results could be. Um, So it was quite long. Definitely not saying it's the best sales page in the world. Definitely wouldn't recommend it if you were going for, you know, volume and you wanted mega numbers. But for what I wanted it for, it performed beautifully. We had lots of lovely comments about the sales page, which I very appreciated. It was very nice. Um, not about how it looked, more so about the actual amount of volume, about how clear it was. Um, I had a couple of comments saying how clear the messaging was, a couple of people saying how it was so nice to be able to read it and know, like, this is what I want to do, or actually it's not, like, it not for me, and it meant that they didn't have to waste time kind of trying to seek out all the answers. So that was very good. Um, the sales page led to an application. There was an application form that you had to then complete at the point in which they completed the application form, um, I then reviewed them. At that point, I then decided whether or not I wanted to speak to people. There was also a box of people to be able to speak to me if they wanted to. Um, but it was quite interesting, actually, because most people... Did anybody want to speak to me? I think I suggested to pretty much everyone speak to them. Not every, well, Actually, no, not everybody had a, a sales call, if you want to call it that. Um, but a couple of, I think it was me that was basically wanting to speak to them versus them wanting to. Um, and so we just clarified a few items. Um, and then, yeah, it's all sort of automated the onboarding process. So they, you know, sign the contracts, pay their first payments um, and get sent all the things that they need to be sent. So that was really exciting. Um, I didn't do a conversion event. So if anyone's like, what you want about? I mean, like I didn't do a challenge. I didn't do a workshop. I didn't do like some grand thing like I didn't do anything like that um I just sell and I sell all the time (laughs) I love selling and I like just selling straight at the point we did do a long pre-launch so that's the one thing I would say the main bulk of this launch was the pre-launch it wasn't actually the launch or the enrollment period the main bit was the before bit of the wait list teasing the wait list telling people it's open and reminding people that it's open and getting people to think about do they want to join like that was the main thing the bit once it it opened is kind of like not so much a big thing mainly also due to the fact of the numbers because actually I didn't need a lot of um you know I didn't need a lot of numbers so um by the point in which we got to that people had already like waitlisted had chance to apply the clients who were already rejoined and had already said they were in so like it you know we what I execute and what I put resource to into the business depends massively on the result I want 
And I knew that the result was either going to be we had six people who I was really happy to have joined or 12 people who I was really happy to have joined had there been like enough people that I wanted to be like, yes. But then as we went into it, I was like, okay, let's see who, you know, shows up. And then that was when I made my decision and was like, right, let's do six. So I just want to give you context. This is why I never really do these (laughs) podcast debrief things because there's so much nuance to like why I would do something versus why I wouldn't and why in this launch I will do something. But then if we're launching something else, I'd do the complete opposite. And that's where, you know, it's important to understand the nuance. Um, I'm trying to think what didn't work for us so I could share with you. To be honest, there wasn't a lot that didn't work, if I'm honest. Um, thankfully, we, you know, we've launched this now a couple of times. We know kind of how it rolls. Um, everything pretty much worked, I think. I think there was maybe a tech issue at the start, but there always is. Was there a tech issue? I don't know. Maybe there was. Um, but yeah, there wasn't much that didn't work. In terms of what would we do differently? I mean, I do a lot the same and we are doing a lot the same. We've already started, you know, getting people ready to the fact that it will open again in November for a January kickoff um, and get people considering if they're joining or not. Um, In terms of what we will do differently, say if we decide that I do want to fill two groups, we will be more consistent in the sense of actually executing on the strategy we had created from a market perspective so I'll talk about that in the next episode but we had a certain thing created and I didn't run with it there's lots of things that I didn't utilize that we could do should I want more numbers um so yeah in terms of what I would do differently next time I don't think there's a right lot we will the sales page would have a improved sales page because sales pages can always be improved um we will probably use more testimonials and client stuff because I don't really use much of that. I'm going to talk about that next. Um, so yeah, we would do things differently, but I don't think it wouldn't be like a complete overhaul because it works really well and it's nice. And for me, it's about how it feels, right? It's about like, how does it feel? Are the right people getting involved? Do I want a certain type of person in there? And that really kind of excites me. Um, in terms of how did the team support me? So the team are you know incredible they're a a big part of the business at May James and I'm very grateful for that Uh, my head of operations is kind of my sidekick in terms of when it comes to launch and enrollment and things and so she is um, the person that helps me the most when it comes to a launch and she does a lot of back-end stuff and tech stuff and um, checking everyone's you know paid their invoices done all the rest of it that they need to do um market and I have market manager and she does help um you know, in terms of bits and pieces, I think most people think that she would be the main person that helps. But actually during a launch, what we tend to do is me and my head of operations are sort of almost like a little launch team. Um, And I try and keep everybody else running on a normal cycle. So that might be interesting for people to know, actually. We won't do this with every launch, but for this one particularly... I like to try and keep our usual content sort of flywheel going of whatever we normally do in our market activity. And then I just layer the launch stuff on top. So um, I try and keep everybody else in the business just moving along and doing their usual stuff. And then we then, then I then tack on anything else I want to do. And so um, me and my head operations will then kind of partner and work that out. With something like, say, a year of clarity launch, that changes to some degree and it is more of a kind of like cohesive whole team effort. Um, But I try, and there's many reasons I do that from a team perspective, which I'm not going to go into today. There's, I try and keep everybody kind of flowing and just rocking and rolling. And mainly that can be done because of how organized it is and because of how the content that we put out day to day anyway is positioned in there for certain reasons and is positioned there for certain strategical, um, to, to meet certain strategical sort of like objectives and milestones. And so removing that wouldn't make sense. And so actually it's just fine to to keep going. But I'm very grateful for, you know, the team that, that work and um, across the business, obviously all the time, but especially during launch and enrollment, because sometimes things can get a bit hectic. Um, Less so with Maze Accelerator, but in other areas it can do. Um, 
I suppose an interesting question would be what has made this different to other launches in the past? And I think it's just you do the more you do it, right, the easier it gets. The more and I, I mean that specifically for specific programs, like you live and breathe the program, you feel into it, you know what you want to say, you know who you want to attract, like it just becomes easier. And I I just think it's part of the process of you committing stuff and you doing it in in out in out in out in out and like you just keep on going and going and um that makes it easier. The other thing that made it feel different was I from a personal perspective had a logistical set of boundaries and capabilities of how much I was able to give to it which meant it was lower. And so we just made it work. And I think that's another huge thing, right? It's about being really scrappy with what actually is key and what actually isn't because there's a lot of activity that people do in a launch that is they think is really helpful but actually isn't and then there's a lot of stuff in launch where actually you just got to sell it and so this was if you've sat and watched me through this launch this is a great example of just selling like you don't need all the fluff you don't need all the bum you need to sell um and so we took out all of the other (laughs) bum because I couldn't because there was various things going on where I had to really knuckle down on what what was going on but how interesting that that was also like the most fun and easy and simple launch I think that's something that's really interesting I just thought actually when we're talking about team I've missed something completely there is another team member who's like a market and sales assistant she has helped me actually in this launch and mainly in terms of pre-launch before we launch in terms of profiling in terms of sales page in terms of proofing um this stuff goes on there. Sorry, that sounds really rude. My brain, my brain just kind of once we get through something, my brain cuts it off. So we have a really like strong um, documentation process of like, what do we think? What are we, like? What's the thoughts? Blah blah blah. And then we move on because I'm like always looking ahead. And at the minute, I'm planning um, end of year launch, and I'm also planning like next next year. So for me, it's like what's happening. I was just thinking about how um, yeah they will they'll be involved. So the team like is involved in the launch, but I think what I was trying to say there is that. I try not to disrupt people because it doesn't really help with people's flows. So try and keep people in the flow of like what they're doing. And then we just kind of add on whoever we need and we'll say like, Hey, can we, can you help with this? Can we do this? And then that's how we flow with it. Um, So I suppose the only other bit is to talk about the fact that the wait list is already in operation for the next round. We've already got people on it, which is exciting. Um, And I'm really excited about it. (laughs) I can't wait for it to start. You know, I'd start enrolling it now if I, could but there's kind of no point really um there's other things I need to be working on so you know enrollment will open in November and we'll go for like November December and then it will close and then the biz uh, then we will break for Christmas and then we kick back off in January and that is when cohort four will start so um we're already building sort of you know I suppose program awareness if you want to call it that um we keep talking about it we share it's important for me. It's important for people to understand, like, what are the options for working with me? And, um, you know, this one's such a good one. Maze Accelerator is incredible value for money and, and is something that is a program that really changes businesses. So it's a fab opportunity and obviously it's limited in terms of the spaces. So, yeah, it's a good one. Why not get on the wait list? <laughs> if you've listened to this, maybe you're like, actually, I need to join. <laughs> get on the wait list. Uh, you can go to www.mayjames.com slash ma. Um, and there is a button there to say join the waitlist and it takes you to the bottom of the page and you can complete um, just your name and email and we will be in touch when enrollment opens in November and um, give you first dibs of whatever spots are available. So yes, that's my debrief. As I say, I don't really do launch debriefs. I'm not sure whether I've answered what you want to know, whether I've missed things. Um, yeah, it's not really my thing to normally do these. I don't know if we'll do another one. Maybe we will. Um but yeah, that's the, that's all there is to say really on it, I suppose. Um, it's not that exciting because we try and make it so that it all runs seamlessly and, you know, pretty much does, bar a few couple of days where it's always a bit kind of, you know, getting everything moving. Um, but yeah, I, you know, love this launch, love the people that are in it. The, we're sort of two, three weeks into the program now and I'm just so loving working with the businesses that are in there, really happy with the choices I've made in terms of who we picked to, to join me as Accelerator, this cohort, and can't wait to see what they achieve over the next, um, you know, six months, rest of the year. And 
super excited for the future of Maze Accelerator. It's a, a fabulous program. I'm excited to see how it evolves. I'm excited to see how it changes. I'm excited to grow the impact of it. Um, yeah, I'll see you. See you in the next episode and join us because I'm going to talk more about the launch specifics about like marketing and about chronic illness and launching and more things about that. Bye.